What's up, what's up, what's up, beautiful people? It's Pretty Girl Loves Trap content. And this is my non-spoiler review of Fight Night, The Million Dollar Heist. Okay, if you're not familiar, it is a series that's available on Peacock currently. It was released in September 2024. It has eight episodes in one season. So this is more so a series review because I don't know if we will get another season. Okay, so... This particular series was produced by Will Packer Media, Universal Studios, Kevin Hart, I believe under Heartbeat Productions. Uh, don't quote me on the production name, um, but Will Packer and Kevin Hart has collaborated numerous times in the past and it's typically, you know, decent bodies of work, right? Um, but I honestly, I must admit, I wasn't sure what to expect with this show so I did not have any expectations, okay? Um, now, one of the hesitations I did have, um, or I should say reservations, <laughs> um, if I must admit, um, this is a star-studded cast, right? And when I started finding out all of these notable names in this series, I must admit, I was not sure how to perceive that. Because honestly, when I feel like sometimes when um, a project has uh, stacked all of the chips, <laughs> pun intended, um, sometimes I feel like <sighs> it's too much. You know, I do feel like most uh, series need a balance of, you know, maybe some notable names and some not so notable names, you know. Um, so I must admit, um, I feel like having a star studded cast for me can be a pro and a con um, because I do feel like with so much star power, the the plot can be lost, right? Um, and this is completely my opinion. Um, but not to say the names of <laughs> that's included in this project is no slight against them because I was happy about all of the people that I realized that was in this particular project. So please do not, you know, think I'm sliding any of these actors and actresses because I have no qualms <laughs> with any of them, okay? I hold several of them near and dear to my heart, but I just had situations in the past where I feel like a project wasn't that great because I feel like the producers, you know, may have focused too much on the casting and not necessarily the the writing or the plot, right? Um, but to name, I don't even want to say a few, but let me just run down the people <laughs> that's in this particular project, okay? We have Kevin Hart, Samuel L. Jackson, Taraji B. Henson, P. Henson, I'm sorry, Terrence Howard, my beloved Don Cheadle, okay? Don Cheadle is probably my favorite favorite actor. Of course, you know, it's typically, you know, going to be Denzel on that list. But Don Cheadle, for me, is, is definitely neck and neck. Definitely neck and neck, honestly. Just for, in my opinion, I've always loved Don, Don Cheadle and his work. So when I heard that he was in this, I was sold. And not to say the names I mentioned prior did not grasp me, but I just something about Don Cheeto in a project. I don't know. I just sometimes I just feel like, you know what? <laughs> I'm in. I'm all in. OK, cash me out. Right. So, you know, we also have David Banner, Chloe uh, Bailey, Clifton Powell, another another favorite of mine. Melvin Gregg, if you're not familiar with the name, he has played uh, Man Boy in Snowfall, which was one of my favorite shows to review previously. Um, Ronrico Lee, I've been a fan of his and Sister Sister. Um, Rockman Dunbar, of course, he was in Soul Foods. Of course, many other projects. Uh, Miles Bullock, who plays, uh, he played in um, BMF, one of the shows I reviewed. And uh, Sinqua Walls, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, he played Sean in Power, which is a show that I uh, currently review as well. Uh, and then we have, you know, appearances by the legendary Debbie Allen, okay? And... 
I'm sorry. I, I go up for Debbie Allen, all right? <laughs> She's just not going to pop up anywhere and on anything. Not at all. Um, and then we also have, you know, Lori Harvey. She makes an appearance. I feel like she did a great job. Um, and there are, you know, other actors there. But I don't even want to say just to name the few because I've named seemingly a football list <laughs> of notable names. But I, I, I must say, you guys, what... What was the budget? What was the budget here? Okay. <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised if some of these actors took a pay cut just to have the experience and just to be able to work with the caliber of experienced actors that is on this roster. Um, so shout out to the production team. Great casting. And I must say, I was very pleased with everyone's performance. Everyone did their thing. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and nonetheless, you know, these stars and familiar faces and non-familiar faces, um, you know, they came together and create this great piece, of, created this great piece of work. Um, speaking of which, let me just do a quick uh, overview of what the show is about. And I'm not trying to spoil this for anyone that hasn't watched. So I don't think you know, I'm saying too much <laughs> in terms of, you know, what goes on in the show. Um, so, you know, you guys wouldn't know the ending or anything because I would not say that. But let me just give you a quick overview of what it's about. And this is a timepiece. Um, this is uh, based on a true story or should I say real events. Um, and it's pretty much regarding a self-proclaimed uh, Atlanta hustler. Um, by the name of Gordon, nicknamed Chicken Man Williams, okay, <laughs> uh, who's played by Kevin Hart. So he is pretty much the lead, well, at least one of the leads on this show. Um, and he pretty much has a quest to obtain the attention and the business opportunity of a well-known narcotics dealer, okay, by the name of Frank Moulton. Now, this show is based in Atlanta. And honestly, I love how they made Atlanta a character on its own, you know, by discussing and illustrating the characters and the attributes of the residents and what they face in Atlanta in the mid to late 1970s. And they did this through showing how, you know, the state of the politics, religion, racism, policing, and just a different type of hustles, legal and illegal, <laughs> that, that was available or that was, you know, an option at that time. Um, and let me also mention, I was not aware of this story. And this show, after I watched it, it prompted me to do further digging and research um, on these events. Um, and I was all on YouTube <laughs> looking up any information I could find because honestly, first, uh, on first view of like, you know, just being introduced to this show. Actually, since it was on Peacock, I was watching another show on Peacock, which, you know, prompt this show to be suggested. And I first thought, I thought this was loosely based on a fictional uh, event <laughs> that may have occurred or may not have occurred uh, regarding Frank Lucas. Um, because Frank Lucas, Lucas had a legendary situation where, you know, he was a famed, you know, narcotics dealer and he gained, uh, notoriety, notoriety and attention at a, you know, boxing match. So I honestly thought <laughs> this was going to be about Frank Lucas, but it's actually about another <laughs> notable narcotics dealer called Frank Moulton, who has plans, uh, to attend, an Ali fight to Muhammad Ali um, in Atlanta um, and word got around. Now, this is pivotal because at the time, Ali, he faced a lot of criticism and backlash by uh, refusing to enter and uh, be a part of the Vietnam War. So, you know, there was a lot of, you know, issues there when it comes to Muhammad Ali, you know, just regarding politics and race and we do get a lot of bit of content in regarding the, you know, Ali and the character who plays them. So we do get a lot of that as well. Um, so that was a great uh, 
little decision that she, that was made in this series to kind of highlight Ali and his mindset and what he was attempting to accomplish. And they did a great job with that. Right. Um, so in regards to Gordon Williams, who's also known by Chicken Man, that's his street name. <laughs> Um, he pretty much throughout the series consumes himself with this opportunity to show Frank Morton and his crew, who was pretty much from different cities in the U S just different gangsters. Um, and he succeeds, you know, in gaining Frank's attention to plan an event for him. Right. But things go terribly wrong. They go all the way left. So much so, you know, lives are lost, valuables are lost and endangered, right? Um, lives are endangered. So, you know, there's a lot of backstabbing and underhanded moves. And Chicken Man pretty much works, you know, through to kind of, you know, try to clear his name of any wrongdoing. Um, and in the midst of clearing his name, he finds himself partnering with an unlikely ally, um, you know, he experienced danger, his loved ones. And in the midst of this chaos, we do see a lot of revelations and self-discoveries um, through this character. I don't want to give away too much, but I will say he lives pretty much a double life. <laughs> and, you know, some by some he's known by Gordon as Gordon Williams and by others he's known as Chicken Man. And, you know, those two identities pretty much represent you know, the different lives that he uh, assumes, I should say, right? Um, but during the course of these events, we are able to witness the character develop up, to the development of him, excuse me, guys, um, and several other characters in this series, which was refreshing and things I look forward to in a series. You know, I love complex characters. I love layered characters. So this was actually a big plus for me. Um, but I enjoyed watching this series um, and in an effort to not completely spoil <laughs> this show. Um, and for those who haven't seen it and that is listening to me right now, I will not go into any further detail. But if you would like to discuss this in further, more in depth. Let me know in the comments and I can schedule a live stream so we can discuss the specifics, you know, a little more because there are some good pointer and some things, you know, that will be fun to discuss. Right. Um, but if you watch this series, you want to get a lot of different things out of it. OK, there's a great balance of comedy, suspense, action, um, you know, a little bit of sexuality there. <laughs> I mean, it's the complete package. I honestly can say and attest to my emotions being all over the place. Like I was happy at one point, I, at several points I was laughing and then I was over there shocked. You know, I had a, I had several what the F moments, okay? Um, there was a few moments where I was angry, teary-eyed, frustrated, you know, nervous. Like I was given all of the things, okay? And that can attest to how great this show is. Um, so y'all can know, y'all can tell I was apparently very much invested in the storylines. Um, it became appointment TV, um, because I caught on a little late, um, because from my understanding, they released the first three episodes one week. And I believe the second week they released two to three more episodes. And then, you know, after that, they started releasing one episode a week until they got to the final episode of eight. So, I um, started watching it when they've already released five episodes. So I binge watched the five episodes within two nights and I was hooked. Right. So <laughs> and that's the pro and the con of a show that is released, has released multiple episodes one week because you you feel like you're fiending, you know, you're scratching your arm and everything. So literally uh, when I found out the actual day it's re it was it releases episodes Literally that morning, like it was Thursday mornings when it came out. So Thursday morning with an, an hour of me waking up, it is on my TV. OK, because I had to see what <laughs> was going to happen next, you guys. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed this show. I recommend anyone watching, um, especially if you're uh, a person like myself who love like heist movies. You know, I love all the oceans, oceans, eight, eleven. 12, 13, Italian job, 
uh, I will put Mission Impossible um, kind of in not necessarily the heist genre or sub genre, uh, but I just love the, you know, let's assemble a team to, you know, together to accomplish some difficult, dangerous ish movie plot. OK, <laughs> that is my jam right there. You guys, if you tell me there's a difficult assignment ahead and we're going to put an ensemble cast together to complete it, I am there. OK, uh, but if I were to grade this, I will give this an A. Uh, I cannot think of any complaints. The only complaint I would say is because I'm being picky <laughs> is more content, more episodes. Um, and each episode was approximately 45 to 50 minutes. So I would have loved more. But hey, it was such a great piece of work. I really can't complain. Um, but let me know in the comments if you've seen it. And if so, let me know your thoughts and your grade. And if you haven't seen it, let me know if you have plans on checking it out. Um, but again, I thank you guys for listening to my review of Fight Night, A Million Dollar Heist. Until, until next time, you guys, because there's movie reviews coming um, and all the things. Um, and of course, I'm going to continue my show reviews. So please like and subscribe if you're new here. Until next time, toodles.